Cool. Uh, 846, Hand of Straits. Uh, Alice has a hand of cards given as an array of integers. Now she wants to rearrange the cards in the group so that each group is size W and consists of W consecutive cards. Uh, return true if, if and only if she, she can. Uh, okay. Uh, hmm. <clears throat> so yeah, so I think this this is where you can use greedy because um, because given the let's say you have mo uh, more than one card and the highest card or the lowest card you have, uh, uh, well, if it's not already previously in another sequence, then it is starting a sequence, right? Uh, so in that case, uh, you just keep on creating that way and using that number or that lowest number, you just create a sequence out of it because what else can you do from it? Uh, and yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to do that. Um, hmm. So that, that's kind of the, uh, well, that's the strategy. Uh, the question is, can we, um, what's the word? Uh, what's the kind of complexity that we could do it? Uh, and hmm. yeah, I mean, we could do it pretty quickly. I think um, yeah. Uh, so you, you can create a lookup table in O of n. So that's I think probably uh, an optimization that's easy. Uh, and then the other thing I would do is just like try to find how to do get min. Um, Hmm. And I guess the and whenever you hear about getting men, uh, the next kind of uh, dot is well, uh, do I use a heap, uh, or maybe do a sort? Um, and I think you, in both cases you have to kind of, uh, uh, if you, especially if you do something with the lookup table, you have to. Um, uh, uh, you have to keep track of two da uh, data structures and kind of sync across them. Uh, so that's the only thing that I'm worried about. Uh, otherwise, this should be, well, I mean, other, other than the hard part, it should be straightforward. <laughs> um, now, how do we want to structure it, right? Hmm. I think there's a sorted dictionary, right, in Python? Let me double check. It's been a while. Just Googling. Uh, okay, so there is a sort of dictionary. Or is there? Hmm. Maybe that's just a extension thing. Because <laughs> if we have a sort of dictionary, then that's pretty much all we need. But um, Oh, there it is. Hmm. Oh, order dick. There we go. Order dictionary. Yeah, I mean, I guess maybe this is kind of uh, uh, a little bit on the cheating side then. But, um, but yeah, I mean, in Python, we could just use sort, uh, order dictionary in this case then. Uh, hmm. Oh wait, over a dictionary only remembers the order there, it's not that the keys are sorted, okay. Uh. So I think the other thing that uh, in theory, and I don't know if I want to do this just because I'm a little bit on the lazy side, uh, the actual, uh, 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 you can actually uh, uh, probably do some sort of, uh, yeah, I mean, you could, if you implement your own tree, you can probably also do, uh, uh, kind of get the property that would fit uh, what you need to 
to kind of fix this or solve this problem, but uh, and let me see if I can get. Yeah, okay. I'll just kind of create a dictionary first and then we'll uh, get from it. Um, Hmm. Okay. And now I have to do a get min. I want to do a heap, I guess so. Let's say, given the uh, right data straight structure, this is actually pretty straightforward. Uh, it's actually very similar to uh, uh, how you would. Um, how you would implement a uh, Dijkstra's algorithm, for example, with the references to uh, 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 the relax min or whatever it's called. I'm still going to see if I can find a sorted min, a uh, sorted dictionary. Yeah, okay, fine. I'll just actually do the non lazy thing then um, and to use a heap. Um, Okay, I'm just trying to think about uh, how, you know, how to really structure this so that uh, we don't run into kind of uh, synchronous issues or syncing between the data, uh, the two um, uh, uh, two data structures. Uh, but maybe we should be okay. We will just keep track of what we kind of used. Um, yeah. Now we push. Oh, yes, we can actually just put it here. Okay. Now let's just print out heap, just to make sure that it's relatively what we expect it to be. Oh. What is it? Push from. Q that he push. Okay. So now this is a min Q, I uh, mean min priority Q, I guess. Uh, cool. <coughs> now we, uh, what we want to do is greedy. Uh, we'll just kind of keep track of the uh, minimum. Uh, so well, uh, Print it out just to make sure. Uh, 
Oh, well, of course it's going to be an inf... Okay, so it is sorted in a good way. Okay. Okay, so the f <clears throat> now the f thing we have to do is well, uh, d dot oh. Now can you do the next four? Okay. So this will certainly work, um, but um, actually this should just return fours. Yeah, return true. Uh, so this kind of works, but not really because, uh, uh, as you notice, we kind of subtract stuff from the dictionary, but we, and here we don't sync with the uh, pop. So that's something that we have to. F mm figure out how to do. Yeah, okay, maybe we'll just push the variable in it. Is that enough? No. I, now we need to figure a way to uh, remove or put in dictionary to remove. Yeah, that is annoying. Okay, maybe that's not good. Okay, well, I guess I'll just create a, a like a almost like a delayed queue type thing where for, for now here and then queue. Uh, Oops. Now, if okay, well, I'll just do off by one. So let me just print this out to be sure. I don't know why I wrote four, because I think I took it from the example, but also we don't really print anything else, so that's why it appears anyway. But
Oh, so this starts with zero. Okay, that makes sense then. Okay. Okay. Two, three, three, four, seven, eight, and then now we just try the other example. Is it supposed to be like this, maybe? I just don't know the format of these things. But yeah, okay. I'm gonna submit though. Uh oh. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Yeah, so I mean uh as an interviewee, I think this is a straight as Straight, uh, straight. I mean, it's very easy to understand. I guess there's, there was an unintentional pun because I guess the problem is called hand of straight. Uh, it's a very straightforward problem. <laughs> straightforward problem. Uh, it tells you exactly what you need to do, and it's very easy to understand. So I, so I appreciate that as an interviewee. Um, and I think it's straightforward to uh, kind of think about. And there are a couple of ways you can think about it. I think the, I think uh, you kind of. Uh, uh, um, if you, know, if you actually tried implementing uh, Daishu's algorithm, for example, uh, the n log n version or n uh, log e version or e log, yeah, v log e version, I think, uh, or v log v version, maybe. Yeah, but uh, anyway, if you try that, then you, you're actually coming to this place where you, uh, you have to synch synchronize between a uh, 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 min heap with uh, kind of uh, uh, things that are happening to each of the elements. So. Uh, and synchronize between two data structures, possibly. Uh, and I kind of did like a kind of a, 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 a doing that way, where each element is only looked at twice, so it's still uh, all of, uh, uh, of n log n, I guess. Um, the log n coming from uh, uh, the heap pop, um, but uh, so yeah, so the extra space is just all of n and the uh, and yeah, the running time is n log n. Um, so I don't think you could do that much faster. Uh, or n I mean, you can do more than constant time faster. But uh, but cool. Uh, I think for me, it's still. Um, I mean, it, it's it's still a little bit on the easy side. And that if you've seen it before, then it's a little tricky. Uh, or if you've seen it before, it's a little easier. Uh, as an interviewer, uh, I think you generally want to avoid those problems. Uh, I mean. I, you want to avoid, obviously, if someone has seen all the problems, there's not, nothing you can do about it. Uh, uh, but but in terms of the components of uh, kind of um, like like if the, the if the problem only has one step and you've seen that one step, then it, it makes the problem very easy to kind of uh, 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 to uh, have them to solve it. I think this one's actually. Um, in theory, implementation-wise, uh, is actually a little trickier than usual. So I actually uh, don't mind this as much. Uh, it's still a little bit. Um, so if I was uh, uh, testing a candidate for kind of programming competency, uh, I would still think this problem is uh, kind of probably within the right difficulty. I mean, I would actually grade myself a little harsh there. There's probably some, not probably. There's definitely some parts of this code I could modularize a little bit better, uh, uh, and I would, and uh, uh, and I would kind of push, if we have time at the, in, during the interview, I would push the uh, candidate to be like, hey, uh, you know, maybe you can uh, uh, I'd optimize or just clean up your code or, or like abstract a little bit. I mean, I know there's a couple of like helpers that are only one or two lines, but it still kind of just makes things easier to read and uh, trying to get their mind in terms of uh, uh, how to modularize and, you know, uh, uh, put things in the components and software engineering principles. Um, but in terms of problem solving, I think uh, just like in terms of testing someone's problem solving ability, I would say this is probably a little bit on the easy side. And if that was my focus on the interview, then that I would not ask this problem. Uh, but overall, it's you know very enjoyable and and kind of like 
you know, it, it's fun to do, I guess, and not super difficult. And, and conceptually, it's very easy to understand. Uh, so, and that's kind of, you know, you want things to be easy to understand. But, but it's a little tricky in that um, uh, uh, as an interviewer, because if, if the person is stuck, um, you want to be able to, uh, uh, you know, nudge them along the way and, and kind of nudge them toward the answer uh, or working solution. But if the, uh, but if you only have like one thing where your first hint is going to give it away, then like, then, <laughs> then uh, uh, you know it's tough. But uh, but that said, uh, that's only if you want. Uh, uh, I mean, I actually don't remember the the, the constraints on this problem because uh, uh, I think it's like ten thousand n, so it's a little tricky. Because I think um, if I was an interviewer and. Uh, the, the interviewee is having a lot of issues with this problem uh, and can I get this to one within this time? Uh, you can loosen the balance a little bit uh, to kind of be like, hey, okay, let's say instead of uh, uh, the constraint on hand dot length is 10,000, let's say the constraint is 1,000. Well, I know there's not uh, um, a major difference between 1,000 and 10,000 except for 10 fold uh, in theory, but, but that also means instead of things needing to be n log n, uh, you can think of n square solutions. and Obviously, in this case, the n-square solution is very easy, uh, or much easier anyway. Uh, and I think uh, it's relatively straightforward, uh, but you still need the optimization around like uh, having a lookup table of a dictionary. I think I haven't really. I mean, this is just like off my head, right? Uh, so, uh, so in that case, you still there's still like some difficulty, or like you know, there's still some problems to solve. But, uh, but otherwise, it's a you know, it's an okay problem. I, I think I. Maybe they get. There's always something that uh, uh, I think. I, mean, I talk about this being in Dijkstra's a lot, but I, and actually, like a lot of people have not actually implemented Dijkstra's al algorithm optimally, even though they've read about it and so forth in class or whatever. So, 